Okay, there we go. Got it recording. All right, for starters, uh, this will be the last in-person lecture of the semester. Uh, technically, there are still two more lecture periods scheduled this Wednesday and next Monday, uh, but we will not meet in person for those. You'll have your exam to take. Uh, the exam is about 100 questions uh, for lecture, so that, will, that covers two class periods. So you have those two classes to get that exam done. Uh, we will meet in person for lab on Wednesday next week, and we will have an exam in person in lab uh, Wednesday this week. Sorry, this Wednesday, two days from today. Uh, but we will not leave for lecture that day, so you can use that morning to study for your lab exam. Um, so a little bit about uh, next semester, actually, just some housekeeping things I need to get and uh, get out of the way. So if you are in ornithology next semester, you need to get yourself a pair of binoculars. Um, yes, you have to have these. It's a requirement for the class. You will, if you don't have them, you will not pass the class. So get binoculars. Uh, if you're wanting to get those for a Christmas present or something like that, that happens pretty often. Folks are looking for uh, getting binoculars for Christmas, make a good present. I'm gonna post this uh, page on, on Moodle. It just gives you some information about binoculars, what you should buy, uh, particularly, you know, you're buying binoculars for bird watching. These aren't hunting binoculars. There's a difference. Uh, so you don't want to um, get anything over eight or 10 magnification. 10 is the max magnification that you should get. And uh, the second number on the, mac on the binoculars, which means how wide of a field of view you're looking at, should be 42. So you should either get eight or 10 by 42, that should be the number you're looking for there. Eight or 10 by 42. The brand isn't that big of a deal. There's several good brands of binoculars out there. Um, you can you can do some Googling on that. Um, but the important thing will be that you have the right size, eight by 42, try them out, look through them, see how fast the focus works. If it takes forever to get the binoculars to come into focus, well, guess what? If you're looking for a bird, they land on a branch, they sit there for a second and then they fly away. And if you're fumbling with your binoculars, looking for the bird or trying to get your thing focused, you're going to miss that bird. And if that was a quiz bird, well, then you just missed that question on the quiz. Uh, these aren't like trees, even though dendrology, we're going to be very similar to dendrology. We're going to be outside most of our labs. We're going to be walking around looking for birds. And I'm going to go, what's that bird? Common name as it flies by. So, or as it sits in the tree or whatever, or as it sings way off in the distance, you're going to be able to know them by sound. Um, so it'll be important that you have those binoculars, that you're good with binoculars, that you practice how to use them, um, getting them in focus. Uh, when I took this class as a student the first time when I was here at Haywood, I took it again at University of Tennessee. When I took it here at Haywood, I had my grandpa's old hunting binoculars that I got from him and they had this big focus on them and it took forever to turn that knob and get that thing in focus, depending on where the bird was sitting. Um, and that put me at a disadvantage on quizzes and things. So don't get you a good pair of binoculars, try them out, make sure you like them, make sure they're comfortable. You can see things clearly through them. You know, if you're standing there in lab and you're going, I can't see a thing through my binoculars, that's not an excuse. You're still going to have to answer the question on the quiz. So um, get you some good binoculars again uh, 8 or 10 by 42 is the numbers you're going to be shooting for uh, if you go if you get any higher than 10 on the magnification you're going to be looking around trying to find the bird and you'll be too zoomed in to find it or if you get too big on the second number you're going to have this big wide field of view and you'll be searching for the bird out in the field so um, 8 by 42 or 10 by 42 are usually the recommended I, I actually i started out on eight when i was a student and i've upgraded to 10 by 42 i liked a little bit extra magnification i think it helps um so if i were to personally recommend something it would be a 10 by 42 but you know try some things out head over to uh bass pro shop and uh over towards knoxville and give some of their binoculars a try they've got some things out there you can try or you can just go to some of the outdoor stores around here and see if they've got some binoculars you can try out. That's usually a good idea to try them before you buy them. Um, otherwise, Nikon makes some good binoculars. Uh, Monarch, I believe, is the brand that they 
their like um or their my their binocular sets they're, they're like bottom line binoculars or monarchs um vortex is another good really good optics that's affordable just look around and see what you what you can find brand is not as important as as can you use them all right, so there's my little blurb on ornithology next semester. That's a fun class. There's a lot to it. You're going to learn 200, over 250 birds by sight and sound. So it's usually, students say it's probably one of the hardest classes. Um, just prepare yourselves for it. It's a lot. There's a lot of birds out there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your exams, your lecture exam. Um, for both your exams will mainly be based off the quizzes, so study the quizzes, uh, but keep in mind that that's not the only thing that could be on your exam. Anything that we've covered from the first exam to this exam is, is fair game, um, so study everything. Uh, make sure you're ready. I, I, I did you know, use, when I was making the lecture quiz this weekend, I did use the lecture, or making the lecture exam, I used the lecture quizzes to make the exam. Um, but there are, you know, if there was something that, you know, had several choices to it, I may have picked a different choice than what was on the first quiz. So I did, you know, mix things up a little bit. Uh, so definitely make sure you study that extra stuff. Um, <clears throat> I took, uh, as well, I took an old exam, rehashed that a little bit, used it for this. Um, so it does include some things that maybe weren't on your first quizzes. Again, just study, study everything. Make sure you're prepared for everything. Uh, same is going to be true in lab. I am going to post your lab quizzes to Moodle. For those of you that are in person, if you're online, your labs are your quizzes are already on Moodle, so you can go back and study those again. Uh, the in-person section, I'm going to say this again so nobody gets confused because one folks, one person got confused on the midterm. If you're in person. Your lab exam is in person, will be in the classroom, just like it was the first exam. If you're online, your your both your exams will be online. All right, let's do the quizzes. Let's see, that's not the right quiz. Not lab quiz one. Let's see where it would be helpful to go back through this too. Let's see if you're in. Yep. So studying for the lecture exam starts at lecture quiz seven and goes all the way to the end for the lab. I believe it starts at lab six, white-tailed deer, and goes to the end. So start at white-tailed deer and work your way from there. Of these lab quizzes. <coughs> All right, what's the scientific name of white-tailed deer? That'll definitely be on there, so make sure you know it. Nobody knows it. Odocoileus virginianus. Odocoileus virginianus, also wild turkey. Meliagris gallopavo. And black bear. Those are the only three scientific names I had you learn this semester. Ursus americanus. Are white-tailed deer specialist or generalist? Generalist is good. That's it. Hopefully that's easy. Which one has a better sense of smell, a dog or a deer? Yeah, the deer does. By how much? You might remember. I think it was like a hundred times better. What's the term for a, a species which many others rely upon? You have a keystone species. How fast can antlers grow per day during the antler development period? Half an inch per day. During what months do male deers grow antlers? March through September or October through February? It's March through September. What's the soft vascularized layer of skin that surrounds velvet antler? Or <laughs> I just gave you the answer. Developing antlers called it's called velvet. 
What's the term for the outgrowth of bone that deer antlers attach to the skull? Yeah, well, y'all missed that on the quiz. It's a pedicle, a pedicle. Make sure you watch that video from Mississippi State about deer antler growth. That's several quiz questions came from there. There will be questions on the exam from there. This one in particular, I think everybody missed this question. The line uh, at the base of the antlers where that degenerates to allow the antler to fall off. That's the abscission line, the abscission line. What's this sign called? A rub. What about this one? A scrape. Good. What's gland A? Preorbital. What's gland B? The metatarsal. What about C? If, if B is the metatarsal, C is the tarsal. And then D, in between the toes, interdigital. Which one was browsed by a deer? A, yeah, because they don't have upper incisors. They've got to rip the um, vegetation off the stem. Which deer has been consuming more dry matter? Yep, also A. Which one's a whitetail? Also A. Uh, let's see, what's the type of running that mule deers have? Stotting. What's this condition called? Piebald. And what's it a sign of? Overpopulation. What's the dark colored substance inside a deer's tooth called? Dentine. And make sure you can age a jawbone. Um, study those pictures that are in that PowerPoint because that'll probably be what I use for, for this. What are the four chambers of a deer's stomach? Yeah, better know those four. Rumen, reticulum, omasum, abomasum. I won't necessarily ask for them in order. Just make sure you know them. That's the correct order, though. All right, now turkeys. What's the scientific name of turkey? Meliagris gallopavo. Let's see here. Uh, don't worry about that question. What's a one-year-old male turkey called? Good. What's a baby turkey called? A poult. What's an adult male called? Tom. What's an adult female called? A hen. Yeah. Let's see here. Make sure you study this map and you can label four of the subspecies. So just know Eastern, Florida, Osceola, Goulds, Miriams, Rio Grande, and oscillated, remember oscillated is in a, a different species. You'll be able to uh, identify four of those on this map. That will definitely be on the exam. Be able to identify the subspecies. For instance, which one's this one? Nope. Rio Grande. That's the Rio Grande. How about this one? Very white on the tail tips. Oh. That's the Goulds. This one's very dark and kind of small. Yeah, that's the Osceola of Florida. This one's got a pretty pretty white around the tail fam, and it's not super white. So it's Merriam's. That's an Eastern. Chestnut brown around the outside, fairly large. And then that's the oscillated, oscillated. Don't confuse Osceola and oscillated. The Osceola, Osceola is the Florida wild turkey. Oscillated is a different species. Be able to label these structures on the head. So what's A? I think it's important to the flap under the chin there. That's the waddle. B is the thing hanging over the bill. And C are the big lumps at the base of the head. Yeah, the major caruncles. 
Uh, what are the four color phases of wild turkey? You may remember. You got smoky gray, melanistic, erythritic, and albino. Let's make sure you can get those four out. Why is it important for hens to be less brightly colored than males? Yes. Yeah, they got to sit on the nest. They need to be protected when they're doing that. What's the term for a cluster, the cluster of long hair-like feathers that grow from the center of a male's and sometimes a female's chest? Beard. That's the beard. Is this a Tom or a Jake? Yeah, it's a Tom. Jake's, the center feathers would be longer. What's a turkey's best sense? Sight. When is breeding season for turkeys? February to April. How many eggs do they lay? 10 to 12. Good. And how long do they incubate those eggs? 28 days. What's the difference between polygony and polyandry? And polyandry is when one female mates with multiple males. Which one are turkeys? Polygony, yep. And then nest predators, that could be just about anything that would eat an egg or a turkey or a baby turkey. There's a whole bunch of stuff you could put for that. Uh, this is something that a lot of you messed up on the quiz. So edge effect is when wildlife tend to be more plentiful in transitional zones where one type of habitat meets another. In other words, the edge. So wildlife tend to be most plentiful on the edges of habitats. Uh, what's the difference between a soft edge and a hard edge? Yep, a hard edge is an abrupt transition between vegetation types, whereas a soft edge is a gradual transition between vegetation types. Which one's better? Soft. Good. Uh, let's see. What are two types of food that are important for deer all year round? I'll give you the four that I have that were listed. Fruits, agriculture crops, trees, and shrubs. There's a slide that says, here's the foods that are important in the spring. Here's the foods that are important in the fall. And there's the ones that are important all year round, or the ones that are on both lists are all year round. How does soil fertility relate to the nutritional health of white-tailed deer? You can just say something about how uh, on sites with relatively poor soil nutrients, deer tend to not reach their full antler potential or their body potential either. What's the most important factor in enabling deer to reach their full genetic potential? Protein, protein the amount of protein they can, they can consume. Uh, so make sure you know the you know, red oak and white oak deal, how red oaks take two years to mature their acorns, right? White oak takes one year to mature its acorns. So if you have a mixture of both, that means you've got sufficient acorns even when there's a drought year. How long after forest management, like clear cutting, does peak forage availability happen? Two to three years. What type of trees are big timber and uh, the best for wildlife in the Southern Appalachians? Just oaks in general. <clears throat> uh, how do herbaceous vegetation and woody browse plants respond to proper prescribed fire implementation? And the answer for that is with increased production and protein content. So they produce more leaves, more leafy mass, and that stuff has more protein in it. Let's see, what has the largest home range? A, a buck living in poor quality habitat, a buck living in good quality habitat, a doe, or a fawn? Yeah, the, duck, the, the buck in poor quality habitat. They're going to have to walk 
more to find their resources. What's the only effective and economical way to keep deer populations in check? Hunting, good. How much of a deer herd should be harvested annually to mimic natural predation? One third. One third, so 33%. Why might permanent water sources be unnecessary for a wild turkey? Yeah, most of their water comes from their food. What type of cover uh, for wild turkey includes open overstories and well-developed understories with abundant grass, herbaceous, and sh shrub vegetation up to three foot high? That's nesting cover. So they want to have the uh, vegetation high enough that they can sit in it and not be seen by predators. Mm -hmm. When they're brood rearing, walking around with their broods, they want the vegetation to be about two foot high so their head pokes up above it. They can see if predators are coming. What do uh, turkey poults eat for the first month or so after hatching? Insects and other small animals. They will eat frogs and little things like that too. Why are dogs wood dogwoods extremely important for wild turkeys? Yeah, important winter food source. Make sure you get that in there. It's a winter food source. That's the importance. Uh, in small hardwood stands, what's the best harvest method for removing overmature or poor mass producing trees and allowing younger, more vigorous trees to re reach the canopy? That's group selection, group selection. So you go in there and you select a group of trees to take. I'm going to remove all the poplars out of this stand or all the trees of a certain age or whatever, just some group you pick to remove. When managing for wild turkeys, what is the percentage of the overall acreage being managed should be in open land? 10%. Yeah, it's small for turkeys. They don't need a lot of open land. They need, they need more cover. Let's see. If you're managing mass-producing trees for turkeys and white-tailed deers, what's the optimum harvest rotation for those trees? Ninety years. Ninety years. Takes a long time for a tree to grow up. Takes ninety years. Uh, let's see, which statement actually describes uh, turkey populations? They're stable only when enough food is available for them. They're stable only when enough space is available for them. They fr fluctuate frequently between booming and busting, even when high-quality habitat is provided. They're uh, stable only when enough cover is available to them. Yeah, they, they frequently fluctuate no matter what the habitat's like. Uh, and which type of acorn uh, do deer prefer when they're both of, uh, abundant on the landscape? White oak. Gua? Because they are sweeter. Red oak has more tannins in it, makes it sour. All right, fire regime is a set of reoccurring conditions of fire that characterize a given ecosystem. Make sure you can regurgitate that definition. What are the three types of fuel found in a forest? Ground, surface, and aerial. Good. Not twigs, leaves, and moss. Ground, surface, aerial. What are the overall effects of fire on soil properties determined by? Yeah, the frequency and the intensity of the fire. What does what do the terms mesic and xeric mean? Yep, mesic means a moderate amount of soil moisture and xeric means dry. So your adaptations for plants to survive on sites that are peri periodically exposed to drought and fire, I'll just give you the list. So thick bark relative to other hardwoods, uh, sprouting ability, uh, increased sprouting ability, resistance to rot following scarring, 
suitability of fire created seed beds for acorn germ germination, uh, deep rooted, and high rates of photosynthesis during drought. So make sure you've you got several of those in your brain. What two species now dominate uh, most mesic oak forest sites? Yellow poplar and red maple. Uh, this is one where you definitely want to go back and study the PowerPoint because that was not a very big quiz. So there's definitely some information that was left off of there. Uh, let's see here. Your other lab exam or quizzes are mainly on Moodle already. Uh, let's see, and then we did uh, fishes was in lecture, so I know that kind of seemed like a lab thing, but we did those in lecture. We did SCAD ID. Remember your SCAD ID? There might be some, uh, um, well, I won't give you any SCAT. That would be rude. Don't worry about that. It's going to be multiple choice, or is it set up like our quizzes where? It'll be uh, a mixture of things. It'll be very similar to your first uh, lab exam, uh, except I'm not. I don't think there's any drawing involved. So, you know, know all the definitions of things. Um, I don't think there'll be much multiple choice. Uh, it'll be mainly short answer, fill in the blank type stuff. Any other questions about that format? So basically quiz wise, it's lab, it's the fire ecology quiz. So that's quiz 10, I think. It's only like four quizzes we just went through. Yeah, quiz seven through 10. Again, I'll post these to Moodle so you'll have them to study. So don't be black bear style. There should be stuff about black bear, that's right. Oh, cause that quiz I believe is on Moodle. Yeah, that quiz is already on Moodle. So study that there. What was the other question? Nothing from the first half that we covered on. Nothing from the first half. It's not cumulative. So <clears throat> just from uh, white tailed deer on, let's see here. Yep, right there. So from deer on down, everything from here down, just the lab stuff, lecture stuff. So on the lecture exam. So white-tailed deer, wild turkey, deer and turkey management. That's another one, I think. No, that was cool. We just looked at that quiz, I guess. And then black bear, the quiz is on Moodle. And then fire ecology and management. The rest of this was all lecture stuff, right? Yeah. Yep. So deer to fire for lab. Everything else for lecture. Any other questions? All right. Well, we're about five minutes early, but that's okay. Uh, so we'll call it there. So be here uh, Wednesday for your exam in lab. Be in lab. That'll be up in the lab. Uh, don't come in the morning because we won't be here. That's your, your chance to study some or go ahead and take your lecture exam, whatever you want to do. Uh, again, the lecture exam is about 100 questions, so make sure you give yourself adequate time to get that done whenever you take it. Uh, and let me know if you have questions about anything. Was that here at last meeting?